In the next five minutes, I'm going to give you five AI workflows that every SDR and AE should be using in their jobs today. These are some of the exact workflows I use to literally save hours every single day. And the truth is, if you're not starting to take advantage of AI and take some of this busy work off your plate, you are officially falling behind. We've reached that point. And the key, it's not just using AI, it's how you instruct the GPTs and the projects you create to give you high quality outputs that you can rely on four repeatable tasks while the rest of your peers are still stuck doing things the hard way. So we're going to cover five plug and play use cases that you can start using today, tomorrow, whenever, and start getting value out of it. So let's get into it. Okay, use case number one is drafting personalized emails. And I'm not talking about, hey, saw we both went to the same college or loved your last LinkedIn post on this. That's fake BS personalization that prospects can sniff out. I'm talking about targeted, value-based, persona-based messaging. That's my version of personalization, naming priorities and challenges that this specific persona cares about based on their industry, their job title, etc. So I have programmed this in my preferred methodology of emailing. You can check out my videos if you want more in-depth on that but I prefer a professional assumptive tone, who, why, what. So basically just giving it some very high level information about you, the company you're a part of, and then some details on the prospect. It's going to drop subject lines that are personalized. It's going to give you standard outbound templates. I basically ask it for a few different templates because I like to pick and mix and match. I like phrasing from one versus another, and it's going to recommend follow-ups. This is a lot of work that gets condensed into literally a minute or less just by giving it some basic information. So to save time, I copied and pasted it. In this example, I work for a company called Blackline. They sell financial management software. If you're not familiar, I said I was part of the retail vertical selling their financial closing consolidation, then found a random prospect, gave it, it's LinkedIn, they work for Walgreens, and this is their title. And now it's creating email templates that are targeted for a controller that works in retail at Walgreens, and it's pulling from information that, that's on Todd's LinkedIn. So it's going to give you some basic subject line examples, close acceleration, close optimization, and then it's going to give you a few different email templates that name priorities that this is, again, my version of personalization. Rather than just a standard outbound template, I'm naming priorities that are specific to this persona. If they were a different job title, like an IT director or a VP of fp a then some of the language here would change. But in this one, close optimization, audit readiness, and systems consolidation. If you went into new chat and just said, hey, can you write me a personalized email to Todd from Walgreens? I promise you the outputs are garbage. You can pause and try it right now. I have hard-coded this GPT in my preferred methodology and explicitly told it where to make changes and how to make changes and given it tons of examples to do so so that it follows this specific format every single time. Because if it doesn't, then you're just wasting your time and you're going to have to go in there and edit it yourself. And it's like, you might as well just do it on your own at that point. So it's going to give you these different templates. I like to mix and match. Sometimes I like one, I pull from another. I, maybe I like this phrasing and I go up and I'm like, all right, I'll insert it into template one. But I like to get a few examples and it's going to recommend some follow-ups as well. If you want to know, again, to save time, I'm going to ask it, can you bullet point out all the ways that you made these templates personalized to Todd and retail specific priorities? And it will tell you. So it's going to tell you where it called out retail specific, and you'll be able to see it in the language. It, it mentions being a part of the retail team or the retail space. The priorities it mentions are, are retail specific, job title targeting. And if any of this doesn't look right to you, you can change it. But as you're coiling the spring and building out your email templates for different personas, job titles, industries, etc., this is the way that can really accelerate that process. So Next workflow I want to show is, and by the way, if you want access to these GPTs, you can check out AI Sales Accelerator. We've hard-coded these. We spent hours making sure they deliver the outputs in our actual form fr framework. So like cold email, the value statement framework, all that. If you're familiar with my value statement framework, that's the next workflow I want to show you here, which is taking that same exact persona and creating cold call scripts. So again, this is how you can coil the spring. This used to be a super manual process. I used to spend days, if not weeks, building this out. So I'm gonna give it the basic information it's looking for. Again, I work for Blackline, I'm in the retail vertical, I'm reaching out to a controller. You can add, always add any other context you'd like. And again, if you're familiar with my value statement framework, you know I prefer to go who, why, what, assumptive, and it's going to give me, I promise you, if you go into new chat and ask for a value statement, even if you type in using Connor Murray's framework, it's not going to give you an actual value statement. The outputs are garbage. So 
I've hard coded this in the way I prefer to cold call so that I can start building out my persona based cold call scripts. Hey, hey, John, or who was it? Todd, this is Connor Murray calling from Blackline. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm just reaching out because I'm part of the financial close and consolidation team here that supports enterprise retail organizations. And we focus on priorities around automating account reconciliation. So here's where we're getting into it. Account recs, automating month end close cycles, usually by working with controller teams. Some of this you might tweak, like I might say finance teams to reduce blank, blank and blank. I might only name two of those to shorten it. So I'll be your main point of contact here for any priorities you may have in these areas going forward, resources you may need, anything like that. And if you're familiar with my content too, you know there's two variations of the value statement I tweak. One is to just go for the meeting right away, who, why, what. I generally teach that to newer reps and to more advanced reps who are have a little more experience going back and forth. I teach them to just basically position yourself as a resource and then pause. But I don't want to go too deep into that. The point is I've hard instructed this just by giving it some very basic information to deliver value statements that are personalized for, in this case, Todd at Walgreens. It's it's title specific and it's persona specific. So next workflow I want to show is the cold call objection GPT. And let's say in this example, they gave me a specific objection that they already use a competitor. So it's trained in my objection handling methodology, ARA, which stands for acknowledge, reaffirm, advance, basically double down and sell the time. And then layer two is ask, clarify, expand. So if you have a cold call where you get tripped up by an objection, a lot of times you used to have to just make a note and an hour later, I'd spend 20, 30 minutes preparing like, oh, how would I respond to that the next time? Let me go into my competitive battle cards and figure out how we differentiate and come up with some sort of response. Well, now this is something you can just go to AI for. So in this case, let's say they said they already use Flowcast. That's what Todd said. It's one of Black Line's big competitors. So I don't think it makes sense to me. Again, you just give it the basic information. And rather than having to stress and worry about how you're going to respond next time, it gives you two responses out of the box. So layer one, totally get that. Yeah. And that's actually why I was reaching out. We work with a lot of teams using Flowcast today. So if there's ever a fit, we can move ahead, but I still think it makes sense for us to carve out 15 minutes or for us to set up time so you can meet our team and we'd be the one supporting you if anything changes down the line. So how's Thursday or Friday? And again, you can make any tweaks you want depending on your preferred style, but that's pretty tight on how I prefer to handle objections as my first layer of defense. And then the ask, clarify, expand, it gives you a way to kind of build credibility for yourself. So that makes sense. And just out of curiosity, is Flowcast covering both your closed consolid and con consolidation process or mainly just the checklist and reconciliations? I only ask because when we work with Flowcast customers, it's often because they're looking to reduce manual work around consolidation and reporting, which is where we go deeper. So, and then you can go for the meeting again here if you want. I've kind of instructed it that way because I think reps just don't do that enough a lot of times. But when you're asking a layer two question, I prefer to just ask it and kind of open the floor to them. That's what I mean by expand. The goal is to kind of build credibility and teach them a little bit. But that again, that's not the main point. I keep getting carried away. The main point is I've instructed this. If you just went into new chat and said, how do I respond to this? It's not going to give you a good output. If you wanted to take it a step deeper, this isn't even one of the workflows I planned on showing, but I created a competitive battle cards GPT. You can upload any internal documents you have to that. So if after the call you wanted to click there and say, here's the objection I got, how do we differentiate against Flowcast? It's going to go deep dive into how, in this case, Blackline stacks up against Flowcast. So Workflow four I want to show is let's say we end up booking that meeting with Todd, whether it came from a cold call or an email. This is something that saves me so much time every single day now is a discovery call prep GPT. I've coded this in the way I prefer to prepare for discovery calls. Like if I wanted to fully prepare for a discovery call, it was really important. That would generally take me 30 to 60 minutes to do it right. So either it was taking me a lot of time or I was cutting corners if I simply didn't have enough time. So I've instructed this to give me to get me 90, 95% of the way there just by giving it some of the basic information about the prospect, their company, their industry, very similar to the other GPTs. So again, to save time, we're gonna use the same guy. You can put his LinkedIn here, Walgreens, retail, black line, nothing known about them. I'm part of the, the retail vertical, that's it. And this used to take me a lot of time. 
I've coded it to, it's always going to link to its sources. So if something ever doesn't look right, you can click into where it actually pulled the information from. So it's going to give you some, you can just scan this. Now I just, you don't always need this for every discovery call or need all this bit, every bit of information, but it's just good context to scroll down and learn a little bit about the person, their organization. Then you start getting into industry specific trends and challenges. Then you start going into, okay, these are the strategic priorities. It's identified at Walgreens. Here's some potential black line solutions that match up and what the business impact could be. It gets you some ideas flowing there. And then this is really, in my opinion, the biggest value are targeted question funnels. So there's lots of, for every company, but in, in this case, Blackline, there's the Blackline platform, but there's lots of different value propositions within the Blackline platform. Maybe some people care more about compliance and regulatory automation, and others care more about the financial reporting capabilities. So it's going to create targeted question funnels depending, you never know which way the conversation is going to go. So it's going to create some targeted question funnels depending on which funnel the customer ends up going down. And if one or two of them look you're like, okay, this is more likely where this is conversations going based on maybe past conversations you've had in the account or something or just stuff you find out about them. You can ask it to give you more examples on any one of these, but I like to get as many ideas as I can because I take the ones I like and I put them on a OneNote for myself so when I open up the call, I have that ready to go as a base to fall back on. It's going to give you some value, recommended value props to emphasize. It's going to give you an opening script. This is how I like to open discovery calls to set a strong tone. It's essentially a point of view as to how you can help them. It gets you off to a strong start to the call and make sure they're not just checking slack and considering this like a wasted 30 minutes. I want to set the tone and let them know I have an idea of how we can help you, but want to get your feedback on that. It's going to give you some objections to prepare for. I asked it not to give me examples of how to overcome them because it's generally not that good at that. So I more just want to be prepared for what the likely objections are. And it's going to recommend some next step steps and give you some supportive resources. And if you can upload actual internal documents from your company, it will pull from those like case studies, success stories you have. It doesn't mean you need to present them on the call, but it's good to just be ready to have them as, as call outs. If they ask like, hey, do you work with other customers in our space? And it's going to show you all the sources it pulled from here too. So the last use case, this saves a ton of time. This is a huge no brainer is let's say we run that discovery call. It goes well, but now you got to follow up with the prospect with any follow-up items, take down all the key notes, organize it, put it into your CRM. So whether you're an AE, this definitely directly saves you time. Or if you're an SDR and you're not always responsible for this stuff, your AE will be very appreciative is taking the transcript from the call. You can take the chunkiest block of text and just dump it into the CRM note taker. So this is gonna summarize all of the key points from the call. It's gonna give you action items, next steps, actually draft an example email for you to send to the prospect. And it's also instructed to recap the call in any preferred sales methodology you want. So Medic, Bant, if you gotta upload that stuff to Salesforce, you used to have to just take notes on the call diligently, try and string something together and put it in your CRM. Now, I only take notes on the most important things I hear from the call that I really want to double down on. Sometimes this doesn't take into account the tone that the prospects are using, but it's going to give you a really good summary with, again, the chunkiest block of text. So I made up a fake example of this conversation with Todd as if I had held that meeting, but this will work if you have like six people on the call. It's insane. They, I don't know how it tells who's saying what or like if it was someone from our side or their side, but it's really good at it. So it's going to give you an executive call summary. It's going to outline who the particip participants were, the key discussion points, tone and level of engagement. I wouldn't really rely on that. Competitive mentions. So CRM notes, what the action, the next step is. And then here's where it gets into current state, negative consequences, sort of that command of the message style recap, where they're looking to go in the future, some of the positive business outcomes, the required capabilities, medic qualification, BANTS qualification, then it's going to draft a pretty solid follow-up email. Again, you can play around with this if you want, but that used to be one of the my pet peeves was running a good call. One, I just never really liked taking detailed notes on calls. I, th I just thought it took away from me being present and and fully diving into the discovery call itself. And then two was running a good call, but then having to piece together my notes and type up a follow-up email 
and next steps. So these are five no-brainer workflows you should be using on your day-to-day. -day. And there's more, but these are the five that I use pretty much on a daily basis to save me hours. And whether you end up using these GPTs or you create your own, the point is you got to instruct these in ways that are reliable and instructed in your preferred methodology. It's not enough to just rely on the new chat and say, hey, can you create me an email template? I work for this company and I'm targeting this persona because it's going to give you garbage outputs and you're able to create a huge gap for yourself against your peers if you're not spending hours on this every single day and week, and they are. So again, if you want access, the links are in the pinned comment and description below to AI Sales Accelerator. We've created over 25 out-of-the-box GPTs. We're creating more as people ask, as new use cases come up, and we just want to stay on the cutting edge of taking advantage of AI and sales. So hope you all got some value out of this one, and I will see you on the next one.